Good. Uh, a geometric progression has first term A and common ratio R, and the terms are all different. A subtle point, but that means that R isn't one. Um, the first, second, and fourth terms of the geometric progression form the first three terms of an arithmetic progression. So show that R cubed minus 2R plus 1 equals 0. We've got to try and think what's going on with this. We've got, we've got a geometric progression. Let's work our way through that. And the first term is A. And the, the common ratio is R. So the second term is AR. And the third term is AR squared. And the fourth term is AR cubed, and so on. Okay? Um, they are the first, second, third, and fourth terms. And then we're told that the first, second, and fourth terms, so the first, second, and fourth terms, form the first three terms of an arithmetic progression. Now, an arithmetic pro progression has a common difference, doesn't it? So that means that the difference between those two terms is the same as the difference between that term and that term. In other words, what we've just been told is that the difference between the second and first term must be the same as the difference between the fourth and second term. Is that okay? That's uh, an arithmetic progression. So D equals AR minus A, and D equals AR cubed minus AR. That's what we that's what we get from the information in the question. Now hopefully this will just simplify to give us that line there. Um, uh, to start with, we've got A as a common factor. And the terms are all different. If the terms are all different, A cannot possibly be zero. So we can divide by A to get R minus 1 is R cubed minus R. And let's shove everything over to one side. Zero is R cubed minus 2R plus 1. That's what we were supposed to show as required. Brilliant. Now, given that this geometric progression converges, find the exact value of r. If it converges, then r is between minus 1 and plus 1, and it satisfies this equation here. This equation must be true. Now, this is looking like, actually, in the midst of this GP question, we've gone back in time slightly. And we've got a factor theorem, remainder theorem question. We've got to try and solve this equation. Try and factorise it. We try and factorise it, try and solve it by using the factor theorem to sub in some values. It'd be nice if we could come up with a value that this works for. long division? Well, to do long division, we need to know a factor first. And we haven't got any factors yet. So we need a number that we can sub into this to give an answer of zero. I can think of one. No, R minus one. R, R minus one, R equals one, yeah. If R equals one, then one minus two plus one equals zero. So as Elliot said, therefore, R minus one is a factor. Now at this point you've got a choice because uh, you could do long division. And if you did long division, which is fine, if you did long division, then the quotient, the remainder would be zero, the quotient would be the thing that goes in this bracket here. But I think, if you're smart about this, there's an easier way of doing it than long division. And that's just by thinking this through. Look, we, this must multiply out to give us this answer over here. So at the start of this bracket, there's no choice. This has to be an R squared. Does that make sense? To get R cubed there, we have to do R times R squared. At the other end of the bracket, that's a plus one. 
So this term here must be a minus 1. There's no other way that we could get that plus 1 there. Now elsewhere, in this bit over here, we've got no r squared term. Now as I multiply out this bracket here, I'm going to have minus 1 r squared, and that bit multiplied must leave me with 0. So that gives me minus 1, so that must give me a plus 1 to leave me with 0. So that must be a plus r in there. We've got minus 2r, let's check that. Minus 2r comes from minus r minus another r, that is minus 2r. So that's what it looks like. All right. Um, does this factorise? It doesn't, does it? There's no things that multiply to give minus 1 and add to give plus 1. So, um, I think we, we're going to try, and, we're going to have to do something with this. Um, something along the lines of the formula. R can't equal 1, that's no good as a solution. We need to solve this. So we're going to try and solve where does r squared plus r minus 1 equal 0. Well, r equals, um, and we said this morning the quadratic formula is something that if you don't know it already, you need to learn it quite quickly. It's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, yeah. I would have, a, as, a, as I multiply it out, mm -hmm. I'd have r cubed, and then I'd have oh. an r squared there, but I'm also going to get a minus yeah, r squared from there, so it's going to cancel out, isn't it? Yeah. Um, this we've got minus one plus or minus. Now this is quite nice in here. This is this is one plus five, so it's root five over two. I've now got three values of r that satisfy this equation. One of them is one. One of them is minus one minus root five over 2, and one of them is minus 1 plus 3, 5 over 2. And I'm looking for the one exact value of r for which this geometric series converges. I'm looking for one value of r that's between minus 1 and plus 1. Well, that one's, that one's no good, because that wouldn't be a convergent sequence. Um, root 5, root 5 is a little bit more than 2, so minus 1, take away a bit more than 2, that's divided by 2, that's going to be minus 1.5 something, but it's going to be more than between minus 1 and plus 1, so that one's no good. Minus 1 plus root 5, you can check it on the calculator, minus 1 plus root 5 is going to be... Um, a little bit more than 1. And dividing that by 2 is going to take me back inside the, the region, isn't it? That's going to give me a value that's between minus 1 and plus 1. So, because r needs to be between minus 1 and plus 1, that one works. Check it on a calculator. Just make sure that that is a reasonable value. Have you done it? Did you do it, Harry? Yeah. Well, it was like 0 0.6 something. Okay. So it, it is what we wanted from it. Last part. Um, given also that the sum to infinity of this geometric progression is 3 plus root 5, find the value of the integer a. This is quite encouraging, actually. We've got this here. I think they've done this for a reason. To let us know that this strange figure of root 5 that's cropped up isn't that weird, it's supposed to be there somewhere. The sum to infinity is that. So, um, 
3 plus root 5 is the sum for infinity, so A over 1 minus R is 3 plus root 5. We're supposed to be finding the value of A. So A is 3 plus root 5 times 1 minus R. Except we now know that 1 minus R is that. Um, R is, what is that? Minus 1 over 2 plus root 5 over 2. Um, you know, this is core 2, so your calculator can probably handle this. So if you want to just type this into a calculator and multiply out, then that would be fine. Um, what is this actually? This is... If you decide that you're not going to do it on a calculator, you're going to go for it, then we've got the common factor of 2 in there. And then it's 3 plus root 5 times 3 minus root 5, which is quite interesting because that's the difference of two squares. That gives us 3 <laughs> times 3 is 9, <laughs> minus 3 root 5 plus 3 root 5, minus another root 5 times root 5. So the answer is a half of 4. So the integer a is 2. Harry's just showing the camera that he's got 2 in his calculator. <laughs> crazy that r equals 2. It's crazy. Crazy. <coughs> that was quite tough. There was a uh, lot of